welcome back. We're at the Clayton Center on Maryville College campus. So, in the process of developing these videos and demonstrations for all of you, we ran into a speed bump with the topic of evolution. Basically, we had plenty of ways to illustrate evolution with food, but what we lacked was a tangible way of demonstrating human evolution in food. And it stayed this way until we managed to stumble upon, by blind luck, the topic of lactose intolerance. Now, lactose is a disaccharide sugar that's composed of glucose and galactose. It is the carbohydrate found in milk. In fact, about 5% of milk is lactose. And it is the primary source of nutrition for the young of mammals. Young mammals secrete the enzyme lactase from their small intestine brush border cells breaking the disaccharide into smaller monosaccharides that can be absorbed into the bloodstream. In all mammals except humans, lactase is only synthesized in the young. But many humans retain lactase production into adulthood, allowing them to get the nutrition they might need or want out of any dairy source like this glass of milk. Some people, however, can't produce this lactase in adulthood, leading to nausea, abdominal bloating, cramping, and sometimes diarrhea if they have too much of a dairy product like milk. But this lactose intolerance is not random, but based on ancestral lineage of that person. Most recent research points to three epicenters for the genetic mutation responsible for adult lactose tolerance or lactase persistence. These three areas all seem to share a particular common characteristic. Human groups there domesticated and relied heavily on large milk-producing mammals such as camels, goats, and cattle. In these areas, milk could provide critical nourishment to those that could digest it. In northern Central Europe, cow's milk could be a valuable food source, thereby increasing an individual's chance of survival when other food items became scarce. A similar effect has been hypothesized for populations in East Africa, modern-day Uganda and Rwanda, and in populations on the Arabian Peninsula and into Sudan. In these areas, camels, goats, and other domesticated mammals could also provide critical sustenance during times of drought. So in each of these regions, we see a selection pressure such as drought or limited food supply favoring individuals that could digest milk as adults. Individuals who had a mutation extending lactase expression had more energy and therefore survived and reproduced, passing on the mutation. As individuals migrated to other geographic locations, the mutation became common to populations in those areas. In this figure, we see various rates of lactose tolerance per region. As you can see, either regions closest to our three epicenters or those having direct migration from one of the epicenters have the highest rates of tolerance and therefore the highest frequencies of the mutant allele. We see examples of this in the Tutsi people in East Africa and in Great Britain. Both regions were in close proximity to the hypothesized epicenters and likely experienced the population interactions necessary to spread the mutation. Another great example of this migration can be found by comparing tolerance rates of Australians of European descent against Aboriginal Australians. In the next figure, we see rates of tolerance again, but this time for ethnic groups in the United States. Once again, we see a clear pattern where ethnicities originating in regions near epicenters have higher rates of tolerance in adults. So in conclusion, we now realize that lactose tolerance is in fact a mutation on the ancestral condition of adult lactose intolerance. So the reason I can enjoy this glass of milk is because my Northern European ancestors were mutants. So concludes another episode in the science of food.